Coming up on MCTV This Week, we look back at the presidency of Mari Ditzler and see the virtual museum that MC students had a hand in designing. This week starts now. Welcome to MCTV. For Cameron Line, I am Cindy Herrera. Monmouth College is in search for a new president. Janessa Calderon sat down with President Ditzler to talk about his past years here at Monmouth College. After nine years at Monmouth College, Maury Ditzler will become the 16th president at Albion College in Albion, Michigan, a private liberal arts school. Someday I want to retire and move to the farm, but I was having so much fun as a college president. And there are so many important challenges. Liberal arts colleges are under attack. You know, there, a lot of liberal arts colleges are going to go out of business, and I think that'll be bad for the country. And, and I think I can still have something to offer to helping liberal arts colleges thrive and survive. Throughout his presidency, campus has seen the new Center for Business and Science building, made the change from the 5-5 to the 4-4 courses in our academic calendar, and the implementation of the largest capital campaign in the college's history, titled Fulfilling the Promise. The plan led to the recommitment to the college's founding principles. When I was hired, the Board of Trustees looked at the needs of the college and they looked at my skills and they said there was a good match. The college is very different ten years later and the needs of the next president, the needs of the president are very different than what I brought with me. It's time for me to let the Board of Trustees pick a president who's correct for the next decade. Over time he has enjoyed watching the students mature in high hope that the best thing they want to do is study and prepare to be citizens ready to contribute to the complex problems of society. I've been at lots of colleges in my career. I've liked the mom, mama students the best of all. Um, they look at me in the eye when I talk to them. They're confident. They seem happy to be here. Uh, and, and they're intellectually curious. I, I'll, I'll always remember the conversations we've had on the floor of the Quimby House with students in ILA as we talked about uh, what they're learning about the liberal arts. For MCTV, I'm Janessa Calderon. The Board of Trustees will soon hire a search firm to find candidates for the president of Monmouth College. An alumni luncheon was held two weeks ago in order to discuss how the virtual museum is being incorporated into the curriculum. The Monmouth College community gathered for lunch to watch assistant English professor Bridget Draxler talk about the new Warren County Virtual Museum. The online museum features thousands of artifacts and can be accessed for free by going online. Senior Ashley Atwell spoke at the luncheon to discuss the benefits of the virtual museum and how she used it to complete her senior project on a local hero from Monmouth. So you can look at these exhibits in the classroom if you're a second grader. You can look at these exhibits if you are thinking of moving to Monmouth. And, uh, and everything in the collections can be made virtual in a way that there's not enough space to always have in the windows. To take a tour of the virtual museum, you can visit the website at warrencountyvirtualmuseum.com. Taking a look at some events on campus this week. Tomorrow night, ACP welcomes back dueling pianos. Come down to Scotland Yard and make a song request starting at 8 p.m. Saturday, tis the season for Christmas at Monmouth. The Doll Chapel will play host to the event at 7.30. And Monday kicks off the final week of classes for the fall semester. Best of luck on all of your finals. Coming up in sports. The men's basketball team start their conference season against Ripon. We'll have the highlights next.
The men's basketball team took to the home court against Ripon Redhawks, looking to, t to even their season at 2-2 two and, two, and start their Midwest Conference play with a win. The Scots started off slow, but were given a boost by this steal by sophomore Cole Jackson, who finishes with a pretty spin move layup. Jackson had a season high at 22 points. The defense continued its strong play with the help of Ben Friday, who delivered a monster block. And the offense was clicking as well, especially from deep. Sophomore Nick Merima hit three threes late in the first half. That set the tone for the rest of the game. As a team, the Scots shot 50% from three-point range. The Scots were up at the half, 35-25. to 25. The, Scots ha the second half was almost like a different game, but the Scots scoring 55 points in the half. The Scots turned to sophomore Andrew Matheson, who had 25 points off the bench, an impressive 12 of 14 shooting. The Red Hawks didn't make a push at the end of the game to get within eight points, but John Calhoun sealed the win with this step back jumper, and the Scots took the win 90 to 82. The men are currently on the court in Iowa taking on Grinnell College, and they'll travel back home on Saturday to take on the Beloit Buccaneers at 1 p.m. That's it for sports. Here are your scores for this week. That's it for MCTV this week. I'm David Beidel. And I'm Cindy Herrera. Make sure to join us next week on MCTV. And remember, you can visit us anytime at all on our website at Monmouth College TV, monmouthcollege.edu slash MCTV. Thank you for watching. I'm Cameron Lyon.